Good evening, everybody, and welcome to our 10-minute daily Mashiach thought number four. So today we're going to continue our discussion that we started yesterday. And we've been talking about the Rama, the uh, sorry, the different views about what shleimus means. Shleimus means reaching my complete potential, reaching the goal, getting to the finish line. And we mentioned that there are different ways of thinking about what is meant by shleimus. How do we know that a man has completed or reached his destination, so to speak? We talked about the fact that the Rambam has a philosophical approach. We call that Chakira. That there's the Torah Halacha approach, also seen in the Rambam. That we have the Primius HaTorah, the inner dimension of Torah, as we see in the Ramban. And we're going to see how the Rebbe is going to show us how they don't really contradict. So yesterday, we talked about the Rambam's philosophical view. In other words, his view, as we call it, based on Chakira. What we see from the Rambam in his Hilchus Tshuva, what we see from the Rambam in his introduction to Mishnayas, and what we see from the Rambam in his Moranavuchim, in his Guide to the Perplexed. And in these places, the Rambam was clear that the goal for a person has a brain. The goal for a person is to know Hashem, to use my head to know Hashem. And the whole purpose of this world is that we can use our minds with that particular goal to know Hashem. And everything that we learn, all sciences and math and any sort of intellect, any kind of seichel that we're learning is just to prime our brain and practice and guide us and teach us how to think properly so we can ultimately come to learn and understand about Hashem. And if that's what this world is about, we know that we are limited in this world. We have so many other worries. So it, with this frame of mind, Yemaisa Mashiach, the time of Mashiach, will be a time when the world will run as we know it, except for the fact that we won't have any foreign governments and we will be free to learn without any worries whatsoever. And we'll be able to therefore learn Tyra without any worry. Mashiach will be someone who will teach us Tyra. He'll be a great Chacham will know a tremendous amount, and we will learn without any worry. That's Yemais Mashiach. And, but the complete goal, because we can't know Hashem fully in a body because we're limited, the full tachlis, shleimus, our potential will only be when our neshamas, our souls, are no longer bound by our bodies, and that will be Olam Haba. So that's what we talked about yesterday. Today, let's have a look at the other view of the Rambam. The Torah Halacha approach of the Rambam. In other words, what do we see from the Rambam in his Hilchos Malachim? In other words, in the laws of Mishnah Torah. And of course, we know that in Mishnah Torah, that's the first time where we see the laws of Mashiach and the times of Mashiach. Um, so the approach that the Rambam takes there is this, is the fact that the times of Mashiach, I'm mean, sorry, the goal, the goal of the whole world is to have the revelation of Malchus Hashem. And this is something that we see also in the, in the Tanya, the Alter Rebbe writes in Shah Yuchud Ben Munah, Tachlis Bria Sa'ilam, what is the purpose of creation of this world? Who Bishvil Hiskalus Malchusai Isparach. It's for the revelation of Hashem's kingdom, for Hashem to be the king. That is why the world was created. So in this, um, in this um, idea that this is the reason why Hashem created the world, and we say because Hashem wanted to be a king over this world, he wanted to be a melech, a melech below am. You can't be a king unless you have a nation. And a nation is someone who's removed from the king. And that was the purpose. That is why Hashem created the world. And that is why he created man, to be someone who would willingly accept him as king. And of course, this is something that we're all familiar with because every single Rosh Hashanah, that's what Rosh Hashanah is about. It's the coronation of Hashem as our king. It's why we say on Rosh Hashanah, Ze Hayyayim Haras Ha'ilam, this is the beginning of the world, even though we really, we know this is the day that Adam Marishan was created, Rosh Hashanah. But because the purpose of creation is for Hashem to be the king, the melech over the world, and Hashem could not 
be the king until we had Adam who gathered all of creation and made him king. That's why we talk about Rosh Hashanah and we say that's the day that that's the beginning of creation because that was the beginning of when the purpose of creation could start uh, come to could eventuate and that was with the creation of Adam. So we see from those many sources that this is the idea it's accepting Hashem as our king. Now when we have a king what does that imply that we accept Hashem as our king? So to accept Hashem as our king that means that we are actually accepting also the yoke of heaven and the yoke of mitzvahs. Because if I am accepting someone as my king, that means I'm going to follow their orders. The orders of Hashem to me are the mitzvahs. So what we see then is that if the tachlis, if the purpose of the world is to crown Hashem as our king, for Hashem to be the king over the whole world, then that means not only that we have Hashem as our king, but we, are, we fulfill all of the mitzvahs. Now this idea that Hashem wants to be king over the world, we see that began with Yitzhak Mitzrayim and Matan Taira. At that time, Hashem took us out of Mitzrayim, we became his nation, and he gave us the Taira. We became the, um, the nation for Hashem, Hashem was our king. And we were given the task at that time of the 613 mitzvahs that we had to do, but the goal was not just that we would accept Hashem as our king, but we would spread that knowledge to the world. And the goal to spread this whole, to the whole world would then mean that we would keep our 613 mitzvahs and the rest of the world would keep their seven mitzvahs. And this is something that we see the Rebbe very much encouraged when he told, when he had the mitzvahim for the Jewish people, Tzvillin and Adlakas Neiris and Kashrus and all the ten mitzvahim plus Rambam and Mitzvah Mashiach. He also encouraged teaching non-Jewish people about Sheva Mitzvah B'nai Noyach because the Sheva Mitzvah B'nai Noyach for non-Jewish people, that is the way that they also accept Hashem as their king. And that very much is part of Tachlis Habriya, that there should be a king, Hashem should be the king of the world and everybody will accept that. So if this is the case, that the goal is not necessarily to know Hashem, the goal rather is to, for Hashem to be king, then what is the role of Mashiach in this case? And therefore, in, under this idea, and this is what we see in Hilchas Malachim, in the Mishnah Torah of the Rambam, is that Mashiach then is a Melech mi base David, he's a king from the house of David, but his role is to establish Hashem's kingdom on this world. So we know in the midst of Minu Melech, the purpose of anointing a king, why were the Jewish people told that they have to anoint a king when they go to Eretz Yisrael? The purpose for anointing a king was to enable the Jewish people to be able to see Hashem as their king. In other words, by having a physical king, we understand what it means to relate to a king. And the king from Beis David was a representative of Hashem in this world. And what did that king therefore need to be? Because he was representing the kingdom of Hashem. He had to be with, um, in a state of complete bittel. Bittel muchat la Hashem. That king had to have complete bittel. He had to be nullified to the will of Hashem. That is why Shalom HaMelech lost the kingdom because he used his own mind and he was not completely bottled to Hashem. So if the purpose is to accept the yoke of Shemaim, Malchus of Hashem, I need a king who's going to represent Hashem. That means he's completely bottled to Hashem. He doesn't let his own mind get mixed into it. And he leads us in the way of keeping Torah and enforce the keeping of mitzvahs. So in this case, when the Rambam talks about Mashiach in Hilchus Melachim, he doesn't talk about someone who's a Navi who's going to teach. He talks about someone who's going to be the king who's going to enforce, lead us in the way of Torah by enforcing the keeping of the mitzvahs, whether it's 613 for the Jewish people or seven for the non-Jewish people. He's someone who's going to enforce that for the entire world. And not only that, but the Rambam discuss, um, describes Mashiach in this way as someone who's very strong, who's going to fight the wars against anyone who stands in their way. So we see now that there's a different version here, a different idea. Okay, so let's compare these two versions. There's a Rambam's philosophical approach, the way we see it in Hilchas Shuvah and 
in his introduction to Mishnayis, and there's Rambam's Torah Halacha approach. Philosophical approach, the point is that we have to use our heads. We have to know Hashem completely. In the Torah Halacha approach, it's about Kabbalah's all, accepting the kingdom of heaven. Now notice that that seems to be an opposite. To know Hashem means I use my seichel. Kabbalah's all, when I say accept the yoke of heaven, that means I'm not using my seichel. I am accepting what Hashem wants of me without asking questions. So that seems to be completely different. Going on to the next difference. In the philosophical approach, it's to know Hashem. Therefore, Mashiach is a Chacham and a Navi who will teach Taira step by step. And at that time, we're going to learn more and more and more than we can do today. And in the Torah, halacha, and the point is to prepare for Olam Haaba. That is why we're learning more and more Torah during Yemites Mashiach. We're free to do so. and We have a wonderful teacher. But ultimately, to prepare us for a soul without a body when we will be able to know Hashem infinitely because our neshamas will not be limited by our bodies. Whereas the Rambam, in his Torah halacha, approach says, no, Mashiach will be a gibor, someone who's very strong an Ish Muhammad, someone who will fight the wars because he has to represent Machos Hashem and he has to enforce keeping all the mitzvahs and he has to fight anyone who gets in the way. And in this case, the idea is not that Yemais Mashiach is a step for Olam Haba, but Yemais Mashiach is a goal in and of itself. If the goal of the world is to have Malchus Hashem, to accept the yoke of heaven, then I have to be able to do those all the mitzvahs. And I can only do the mitzvahs if I am a soul in a body. That was one of the things that Maishu Rabbeinu argued with the angels who said, why should the Torah be given to people? And Maishu Rabbeinu said to them, because you have parents that you can honor, Right? Do you have stuck that you can give to poor people? So obviously, if we're going to keep the mitzvahs, we need to be souls in bodies. So here we see the two different versions and what seems to be completely contradictory views about what shleimus means, what is the purpose of the world, what's the purpose of creation, what is the role of Mashiach, and a little bit of the fact about this notion of what is where, where does Eilam Haba fit? Is Eilam Haba the times of Mashiach or is Eilam Haba a time after Mashiach? So that takes us to the end of our Mashiach thought for tonight. Tomorrow, Amir Hashem, we will see how these two approaches are not necessarily contradictory, but how we can show that they are actually coming from um, slightly different perspectives, but they don't contradict. So please join me again tomorrow for our daily Mashiach thought number five.